So I wanted to talk real quick about the PewDiePie printer predicament. And no, I'm not a big fan of the whole controversy or uh, whatever they're doing. It's it's amusing. It's pop culture. Uh, PewDiePie is the most subscribed YouTube channel on the internet. T-Series is the second most subscribed YouTube channel on the internet. Uh, and they are income, uh, I guess, pseudo in competition with each other. So the fans of uh, Felix are now trying to gain more subscribers. And where this gains interest to me is the methodology that someone called the hacker giraffe took. So what this person had done was found a bunch of open printers. Now, I've actually covered this uh, because the news got a lot of this wrong and I reached out to the news people. They, they don't, they're so busy looking for the next story, they didn't even reply to me when I sent this to them a long time ago. Um, when threats were sent out and ransom notices sent out to printers via the internet. And I broke down some of the technical details back in June 19th of 2017 because these printers are just left open to the internet. Now everyone's thinking it's some massive blah, blah, blah attack. And the reality is um, anyone who has heard of Shodan.io and types the words port colon 9100 in parentheses here, you can find, and this is just one port, by the way, this is not all the printer ports, this is just a common one, 586,850 results. Now what these are is printers, not guaranteed that every one of these is a printer, but I'm going to bet a lot of them are printers. Uh, if you're not familiar, port 9100 is the HP Jet Direct port. And this HP Jet Direct port is left open to the internet because of I don't know, bad IT policies or not knowledgeable people who say, I need to print from one office to another and we don't want to do VPN. That's complicated. Uh, so we're just going to send things over port 9100 and we're just going to open it to the internet. Well, unfortunately, you're opening it to other people. And that's what was done here. So Hacker Draft decided to increase uh, people subscribing to Pootie Pie. He would, <laughs> this is, he sent out lots of print jobs, lots and lots of print jobs. I think over 50,000 um, to all these random printers. Now, we don't really know where these printers are. I mean, you can try to infer based on different IP addresses where they might be, but you don't necessarily know. And this was, of course, a mess of internet printers being sent this subscribe to Pootie Pie's channel, which caused mass confusion and everything else. Now, this is a problem, and I want to talk about a little bit how the problem occurs and still occurs, and we've had to deal with this directly ourselves. And this drives me nuts. So there are methodologies um, that are better than this. There's VPNs you can have so printers can be worked from remote offices. Matter of fact, we've set these up with clients, but we have dealt with companies that are in the Fortune 500 list. Now, they're not our clients. Our clients service some of them in the transportation sector. They tell us to do things like open up port 9100 across the internet because that's how they do it. So it's not like just your average, uh, some IT guy that doesn't know what he's doing, uh, IT dude that's like, hey, uh, I'm just gonna open up this to the internet. It gets much worse. It's these large companies that have not bothered. And I, I almost wanna send a scathing email to their security people, who by the way, I looked up and they was emailing back and forth with, um, the person had security in their title at the uh, place, that they think opening up these ports is just fine. Uh, and I'm just like, how do you, like, how is it do you guys have made the Fortune 500 list but not developed, I don't know, an app, a Raspberry Pi? Even my friend who works at a hospital, they have their own custom uh, developed app so they don't have to deal with VPNs all the time. That is basically a cloud-enabled SSL secured app that you can send print jobs to and then a local Raspberry Pi brings them back to the printer. I mean, there's complete methodologies uh, here in 2018 to get around that. You can't just call uh, people and vendors and go, hey, open up port 9100, and yet they do. Uh, the other people that we see this a lot, and this has been another aggravation for us, and we've done what we can, uh, we took over some uh, salons and I'm not going to call out the salon software because it would then alert you to anyone you know using it. You, you can their printers are wide open, uh, but there's some salon software that works cloud enabled by doing RDP. And instead of using RDP print services because that's difficult, <clears throat> they decide to use instead opening up port 9100 on every salon. They just open it to the internet, they tell them which printers to buy. Um, and when you do a print job, it just sends it to that IP address over the internet without filtering. They just open up the firewall. Uh, lots of salons don't have nice filtered firewalls that block 
other than certain IP addresses. They don't offer that as a service. Um, and we've run into this and we've put better firewalls in because they, some of them uh, just started getting junk coming through their printers all the time. This is absurd here in 2018, but it's, there's a lot of companies doing it. And it's unfortunately led to this. Now, if you want to experiment and on your own network on things and devices you own, one, you can always check your external ports and you can scan yourself to see if you're open or have something open. It's a good thing to check for your clients because you know you don't want these problems on there. Audit the firewall rules. Then we have the printer exploit toolkit. And I'm gonna leave a link to this because it's also interesting because this is things you can check on your own network. And this is what was used. They they break down inside of your own network, of course, please, and networks you own that you have permission to do this on. Um, you can do things like test the vulnerability of printers you have, what can be done. And it's it's a good exercise in security as you're understanding what can happen on a network. And, you know, we do this when we've uh, come in and taken over networks. We, we've run into clients who've had their entire guest network because they have a public venue and they've left all their printers exposed on there, which, a hey, great, no one did it yet, but uh, through a quick scan of some of this and testing it, like you can start to see what threat models are there uh, based on this. And you think, but it was just a printer. Yeah, it's a lot more than that when you look at what this toolkit can do. It's a lot more than sending print jobs and it becomes an edge case into some networks. Uh, there was even a case of a certain printer that had a, a uh, bridging option. So if you got into it via Wi-Fi, it would bridge into a private network. So you really have to you know, think about these. And this is also... There's so much knowledge you can uh, drag into on this. There's a lot to uh, learn, but there's a lot of security threats that can come from just opening a printer. Um, so I want people to think about that from the security aspect um, as opposed to the amusing aspect of people trying to get Pootie Pie to be the most uh, subscribed person on YouTube, which is novel and pop culture-y. And uh, that's as much fun as I have with it. Thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave us some feedback below to let us know any details, what you like and didn't like as well, because we love hearing the feedback. Or if you just want to say thanks, leave a comment. If you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in notifications. Hopefully they send them, <laughs> as we've learned with YouTube. Anyways, if you want to contract us for consulting services, you go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com and you can reach out to us for all the projects that we can do and help you. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses, IT companies, even some large companies, and you can farm different work out to us or just hire us as a consultant to help design your network. Also, if you want to help the channel in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have affiliate links. You'll find them in the description. You'll also find recommendations to other affiliate links and things you can sign up for on lawrencesystems.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.